Welcome back to another episode of Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living. I'm so glad you're here joining us in today's conversation. If you are new here, hey, I'm Danny. I am the owner of Fig and Farm at Home, the podcaster here, and the creator of Design 101, an online design school. And I bring weekly design inspiration to you so that you can move your design needle forward wherever you want it to go. And there are so many of us who get stuck in this one simple space. And it is literally, where do I start? And that is what we've been talking about the last three weeks. This is the final part today. But we've been talking about where do I start when you just don't know, when you don't know. And I feel like there are parts of the continuum where you could be in this place of unknowingness, in this place of, I'm not sure where to begin. So Two episodes ago, in part one, we talked about being stuck in inaction, being stuck in a way that you are just kind of rooted in the inability to move forward. It's not that you don't know what color to paint the wall. It is that you believe that there's something holding you back that is not allowing you to. And that might be this idea that you are going to wait until the kids are are grown and gone before you bring pretty things into your home. Or you believe that maybe you don't have enough money in order to make the transformations that you want. Or you believe that if you actually spend money, but it's kind of on a a lower budget, that it's going to look cheap. And I want to dispel all of those limiting beliefs. And that is what we are calling them. They are limiting beliefs. So if you have not listened to that episode, I want you to go back two episodes and listen to that one. Last week in part two, we talked about, for those of you who are wondering where to start, you are literally wondering where to start. You have the motivation. You have maybe even a little nest egg that you have saved up and you're ready to take action. You know which room you're going to do and you might even have an idea of the paint color you want to paint, but you might need some furniture too and you are literally wondering, what step do I take first? What do I do? Do I do part A first, part B first? Do I work on the floors? Do I work on the ceiling? Do I work on the wall? Do I hang the art? Do I buy the couch? Do I, you have a lot of questions. And last week we dove right into it. And spoiler alert, if you did not listen to it, it is not about choosing the color of wall. It's not even about choosing which room to do. It is about understanding what your design aesthetic is. And let me give you one more other spoiler alert. It is not farmhouse. It is not modern. It is not coastal grandma. It is not any of those global design styles that we are so in tune with in when we're watching HGTV shows, when we're watching the design shows, when we're reading the design magazines. It is not any number of those. Your design aesthetic is as unique to you as your personality. It's as unique to you as your little fingerprint. It's as unique to you and as different from the person down the street, your best friend across town, your aunt in another city, even me sitting out here over on the other side of the microphone. It is completely you. And how you understand what your own aesthetic is, that is teachable. But you need to be a student of design. And so we talk about how to do that in last week's episode. And this week, this one is for those of you who have started. But you're at a roadblock. You've started, you might know which room to do, you might have painted the wall, you might have bought the couch, but now you're wondering, oh, before I take one more step forward, I need to have some answers. I've hit a roadblock and I want to make sure that my forward moving action is going to be productive, efficient, cost effective, the right choice. Basically, let's boil it down to there. I want it to be done right. I want it to look cohesive. The words that you guys are sharing with me is I want it to look put together. And I am putting that in air quotes. And the word I use for that is to look cohesive, to make it look like it is one seamless space flowing into another. And I want that for you too. So today's episode is designed for those of you who have gotten started. You might have gone with gusto and now you're hitting some sort of roadblock and what you can do with that. All right, but before we dive into today's episode, I have some good news. I have some really good news to share. Somewhere in the last couple days, while I was sleeping, we reached 10,000 downloads on the podcast, more than 10,000. We reached and exceeded 10,000. And I say we, and I don't mean it flippantly. I mean we, because what this means is that I have turned on the podcast 
Oh, wait. Is this good news? Is today the 100th episode also? <gasps> it is. Oh my gosh. What a happy coincidence. We, I have turned on the microphone 100 times. I have sat behind it. I've recorded. I've laughed. I've even cried. I have shared and shared and shared some more. I've answered questions and I've done all the things in order to encourage you to take that one step forward. And so many of you have, and I am so thankful to all of you who have listened, all of you who have given me feedback, all of you who have asked questions, all of you who have left reviews. If you have not left a review yet, I would strongly encourage you and ask you humbly to please do that because reviews are what is going to continue allowing our show to be seen by other women just like you who want the help. And I say that because not too long ago, I was you. Not too long ago. It wasn't too long ago when I was sitting in the basement of our home in Iowa during Owen's nap time and I thought, this wall is really boring. (laughs) And we were on a super, super tight budget. It was so tight that Owen and I shopped at Goodwill, which whatever, that's fine. It was totally fine. It was so tight that it was so tight that when we were building my husband's work wardrobe, the getting the ties and the shirts and the dress clothes and all of that, we were waiting for that once a month JC Penny coupon to arrive in the mail so that we can we could save 10 bucks on the $12 shirt. We were in that place. And design can happen sisters it can happen it can happen when you are open to learning it can happen when you are receptive to ideas it can happen when you are a student of design and i hope that i'm bringing that knowledge and that foundation for you and so if you have learned anything if you've taken one risk with me if you have asked the question if you have been coming back time and time and time again you're my girl you are my girl and i would be so honored and so humbled if you would stop listening for a minute and write a review on Apple Podcasts. That's where people are going to find me. And it just really, it fuels the fire that continues to create for all of you. That's what it does. And in that note, I'm going to share what Meg wrote. So humbling. So thank you so much, Meg. She says, this podcast has been the most helpful in my decorating journey. Danny gives actionable steps on where to begin, how to stay unstuck, and most important, how to help make your home beautiful. Many design podcasts begin with designers and expensive brands, things way out of my reach. Danny built me a bridge from the beginning to a place where I can see progress. Thank you, Danny, for making a beautiful home a possibility in everyday life. Meg, you are so incredibly welcome, and I am so thrilled that you took a second to write that for me. It means more than you know, and I am humbled and beyond thankful that you are listening. So thank you. Thank you, Meg. All right, let's dive in to today's episode. Enjoy today's show. We grew up with the phrase, home is where the heart is, but our culture has shifted and now the message is, home should be Pinterest perfect. I'm calling BS on that message. Home, it's not about the stuff, it's about the story, and whether you know it or not, your home is a reflection of you and is already saying something. So what is it that you want it to say? Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget like ramen eating, goodwill shopping budget, and I learned a few things along the way, like how to bring big style to your home without breaking the bank, and I'm sharing it all with you. Tips, tricks, decor, and design advice so you can learn to tell your story with your style, where you can start living free from the Pinterest perfect trap and start living a life of intention. Welcome to Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living and where it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. All right, so you have started. You were diligent about saving just a little bit of money set aside so that you could make the changes to the room that you'd already picked out. And you had an idea of what it was you needed in order to have the room serve you and be a little bit more functional for you. You might have painted the walls. You might have bought the new chair that you've been eyeing for several months and Now you're at a point where you are running into some roadblocks. 
it's time to make some more decisions. It's time to maybe add some of the finishing touches. Maybe it's time to decide about the layout of your furniture. Maybe it's time to decide if actually that couch is what you need or not, if it's too big or not. Maybe your eyes are finally open to this idea that the no area rug in your space makes it look like your furniture is floating and you need to remediate that. Maybe your eyes are open to this idea that you are living with too much stuff. I don't know. Whatever that roadblock is for you, you have hit it. And now you're asking some more questions. And before you make that next step forward, before you continue to drive forward, you are kind of backtracking a little bit, or you're maybe staying stuck and you're not doing anything at all. Last week, we talked about pitfalls to avoid when you're stuck and you're trying to start. And some of those pitfalls to avoid are recreating a room that you have admired and seen on Pinterest. And you are trying to just, you know that you like it. You can explain that you love this image, maybe this room that they've created, and you're just going to replicate that room in your space. And that's a pitfall. It's a pitfall because it is void of your personality. It is void of your design aesthetic and oftentimes it leads to designing on an island where one room looks very separate than another. The other pitfall that we talked about was getting stuck with a purchase that inhibits any more growth and sometimes when you you've started and you're kind of questioning design decisions again this is where that pitfall really takes shape. This is where it really comes to life and so I want to caution you right here that continuing to push forward when you're still asking yourself so many questions, you might be bound by making a big ticket purchase that then keeps you held a little bit more stuck. And those big ticket purchases, of course they can be returned. Of course they can be eliminated. Of course they can be, you know, you can purchase another one again, but it's not super realistic. I'm speaking to those of you who it takes a while to save up to buy the $2,000 couch. It takes a while to say, I'm going to buy the $300 armchair. I get it. I get it because I was you. I get it because I am you. And if you walk into a decision like that, a really big decision like that, when you are still floundering and questioning, you could be bound to that big ticket purchase, that decision for a while. And What happens is when you are bound to that big ticket purchase, you no longer are making the design decisions. Do you know what is? The item that you just splurged on, the item that you just saved toward, the item that you purchased because you thought it might have been on sale or because you thought it was the right thing when you were still floundering. And that is now the decision maker. Because moving forward, if you continue making decisions, you are designing around that big ticket purchase. And we want to avoid that. So if you are finding yourself, you've started and now you're kind of stuck, I want you to think about this before you make any more steps forward. I want you to think about if you're ready to ask for help. Yes, it is okay. (laughs) It is absolutely okay to ask for help. Here are three signs that you might be ready to ask for help. The first sign is that your confidence is waning a little bit. At the beginning of this project, you may have gone into action with a lot of gusto. You may have known very confidently what color you wanted. You may have known exactly how you wanted to lay out the furniture and that your couch wasn't serving you. You knew those so confidently, but now you feel like you're second guessing. You're asking your husband, what do you think about this? You're asking your sister, you're asking your best friend, you're even asking the UPS man. (laughs) If you are asking the UPS man, girl, seriously, (laughs) he needs to go back to his job and just call me. (laughs) But really, that can happen. You are asking everyone under the sun, and that is a sign that you're not quite ready to make a really important decision. And I don't mean that you will never be ready. I just mean you might need to take a second and reevaluate. You might need to take a second and become that student of design again, to take a second and get in tune with what your aesthetic is and to make sure that you are filtering all of the decisions you're making through the lens of your design aesthetic. And if you're not sure how to do that, hang tight. 
That's what we talked about last week. And help might not necessarily mean calling the designer. Help might not necessarily mean hiring out and having someone finish it for you. Help might mean going back to the basics and really understanding what your aesthetic is. Last week, I introduced you to Pinterest 101, Pinning with a Purpose. It's my course that teaches you how to really, truly understand your design aesthetic so that you can design with confidence, so that you can shop and make decisions with ease and efficiency, so that you can get out of any kind of overwhelm that you're in and make those decisions that will help to create a home that really reflects you, that makes it feel and look cohesive, that makes it feel and look like it is a representation of you and not a Pinterest picture. And if you find yourself having started and now stuck again, it might be that lack of confidence that can be remediated by becoming a student of design. So taking Pinterest 101 could be a really wonderful tool for you. This could be a wonderful resource as you are stuck again in that place of indecision, inaction, frustration, overwhelm, this could be a really, really great tool. And it doesn't mean that you have to hire the designer. It doesn't mean that you have to have them come over and be in your space. It means that you're doing it on your own, just like you wanted to, but you're refining that. And Pinterest 101, when you take that course, this is something that I recommend my students do over and over and over again. Quite honestly, it took me years to finally understand what my aesthetic is and put a name to that. And I want it to be as easy for you. It might not take you years. You'll be able to do your first project within the first month or so after doing Pinterest 101. But you'll want to repeat it because as you grow and you get older, guess what happens? Your styles change. Your style gets more refined. You start having a more clear understanding of what it is you like and don't like. So I recommend it. I recommend that you repeat it as needed, when you need it. So if you are a student of Pinterest 101 and you are in this place, guess what? Do it again, absolutely. But also when you take Pinterest 101, you have access to a private Facebook group that is just for students. It's just for students of my Design 101 Academy and you are able to get real-time feedback based on what you're learning, based on what you're stuck on, based on what you need from the course that you're taking. So I do want to make sure that you know that you have support. You will have me popping in there weekly to provide support, to take a look at what your project is and to give you specific feedback that is going to help you along the way. Because what I don't want, what I don't want is for you to be learning and growing and then asking yourself the question without anyone to answer those questions. I don't want you to invest in a course, then be left alone. That is not my style of teaching at all. The second sign that could be indicating that you're ready to ask for help is that you are able to make design decisions and make purchases that support those design decisions with confidence. You're able to do it efficiently and effectively, and you're able to do it really well. You're proud of it. You've learned a lot from Pinterest 101, and now you bring the things home and they sit, and they sit, and you play with it, and you put it on the credenza, then you put it on the bookshelf, then you put it on the wall, then you put it on the coffee table, and Every time you move it from one space to another, you end up telling yourself, this looks janky, this looks silly, this looks stupid, this looks (laughs) whatever that negative word is, this looks, and you're not happy with it. Basically, it comes down to this. You're understanding your aesthetic, you make design decisions confidently, you make those purchases confidently, you come home and you have no idea what to do with it. This is another indicator that you need some help. You're ready to just do the final stages. You're ready to put the nuance to your design. You're ready to have the things in place so that you can finally breathe a little, so you can finally use the room the way you want it to be used, so you can stop worrying about it so much. There are resources available for you, absolutely. I can think of three that I offer that might be helpful for you. One is booking a call. Can we have a FaceTime and walk through your space together? 
Absolutely. That's an option. The other one is my bookshelf styling guide. And I don't want you to be fooled by what the the word bookshelf, because this bookshelf styling guide takes you beyond bookshelves, takes you to all flat surfaces, piano tops, mantles, credenzas, dressers, coffee tables, tablescapes, bookshelves, you name it, it takes you there. And it teaches you the principle of design in the fine details. It teaches you how about the nuance of design and how to layer and add depth and proportion and scale and all the things that put your room together at the end, the finishing touch. The third thing I can think about is booking a room edit. In a nutshell, it's a designer's eye on your space, giving you that final feedback. It's like this. If you were in school, maybe you were writing an English paper and you're you did a great job, you did all the research, you did all the work, you put it all together and you turn it in. And once you turn it in, you might get a few red marks. And I've never really appreciated the red marks. You know what? They're going to be purple because purple is happier (laughs) than red. They're going to be purple or better yet, turquoise. They're going to be turquoise marks. And those turquoise marks are going to be able to not only affirm some of the choices that you made, but they are also going to be able to give you helpful tips and hints and specific feedback in order to help you to make those changes that will tweak it just enough to get it in the direction that you want it to go. Room edits are perfect for you because you have already decided which direction you're going. You've already started. You already kind of know. And now it's just that final little edit, that final little designer's eye on your space, giving you those turquoise little write-ups that say, have you thought about this idea? Have you thought about that idea? What about this? You wanted a little bit of white. How about some white over here? Let's balance it out. You get the idea. It's the designer's eye that's giving you the fine tuning that's helping you put it all into place. And as a side note, you don't have to have started in order to book a room edit. You could actually be at the very beginning of your design journey, knowing you want change, but not knowing where to start. You literally could book a room edit. I'm going to link in the show notes, a podcast that we did back in the winter with one of my clients who booked a room edit and has made so much growth and stride and change in her home just from the room edit. The third sign that you could be ready to ask for some help is you have started with gusto. You know that you need to make a plan. You know that what your design aesthetic is, but the product selection is still incredibly overwhelming. You know, for example, that you need a new leather couch, but you're not entirely confident in your ability to choose the right one because after all, we are saving money for these big changes. We're living with these big changes for quite a while. You know what your aesthetic is. You know that you want that leather couch. You know that you want the three-seater leather couch. You've done the measurements. You've done all the work, but you're not entirely sure if this style of leather couch is going to look good in your space or that style is going to look good in your space. This color that's maybe a little bit more camel or this color that's maybe a little bit more chocolate. You just want to have backup. You want that backup plan, right? You want that safety pass and you want the affirmation that you're on the right track. Can you book a call? Absolutely. But you might be better with a product roundup and a product roundup is not on my website. This is something that because design is so specific to each person, Sometimes you need something tailor-made just for you and your project. So this is where I would encourage you to book that free 15-minute discovery call that will talk about the project and maybe what it is you need. Because maybe maybe you do need the room edit. Maybe you just need the FaceTime conversation. Maybe you just need the product roundup, which is a whole heck of a lot cheaper than the whole design because you've got it, girl. You have the design already. You have the plan. You know the purpose of the room. You have it all. You just need some product selections so that you know that you're making a decision that is a wise one, a wise investment, and that you can make that decision out of a handful of products rather than the entire internet full of products. (laughs) There are so many options available for you for us to work together. And if you're not certain, if you are so overwhelmed even by these four things I talked about, the room edit, booking a call, bookshelf styling, Pinterest 101, if you're not sure which one is best for you, I want you to start by just having the conversation with me. Just email me. Just reach out on Instagram. 
Just book the 15 minute free discovery call. And then we can have the conversation that gets you started because starting is the first step in getting unstuck. But here's the catch. Some of you are afraid to reach out and ask for help. And I get it. And some of you are like, no, I've, I've already reached out. She's helped me a ton. I've already booked the thing. I've already bought Pinterest 101. I've already done the thing. I'm not, I'm not afraid, but there are so many of you who are, and here are a couple of the most common reasons why you might be afraid. And what I want you to know is that not only have I been in your shoes, but there have been several clients I've worked with who have been stuck for so many years. And when they finally reached out and we finally made progress and we finally made change and transformation and designed towards their aesthetic, when they finally did that, this was their response. Why did it take me so long? This was so incredibly worth it. So it's worth it. It is worth it for yourself to reach out. But here they are, the two most common reasons people don't reach out. People don't take the first step. People don't take the offer for the free discovery call. The first reason is that they're embarrassed of their homes. They're embarrassed. And what I want to say to you is there was a time when I was embarrassed of my home. If you've been listening for a while, you know it. You know it was when I was a child and grew up in an environment that wasn't me. It was embarrassing to bring my friends home. And I think ultimately that is probably one of the reasons why I became a home decorator because I was in control finally of my environment and I wanted to take the reins of that. But it doesn't have to be embarrassing. And in fact, if that is your reason, that should be the number one reason why you want to make the first step, why you want to reach out. Because having a home that you are embarrassed of is not a home that I would hope that you would want to live in. There are changes that can happen, and there are changes that can happen in your timeline, in your budget, in a way that is honoring the work that you need to put into it, that is honoring the timeline that you need to save for the changes, is honoring the people that you live with, is honoring all of the things. There is no shame in what your home environment is. If you want change and you desire that, there's always a way. There's always a way. The second reason is that there is a big misconception that it's going to cost a lot. So let me back up first and say, guess what? The free discovery call is free. (laughs) And there might be a recommendation for what it is that you can do in order to get the results you want. And I would hope that you would want that recommendation because you are ready to make those steps, right? You're ready to start. But in order to dispel some of the misconception that design costs a lot, I'm going to read part of my pricing menu. Some of these prices are prices of courses that are in my online design academy, and some of them are services I offer. And not only am I going to read the pricing menu, but I'm going to put it into perspective for you. So it goes like this. One of the least expensive courses I have is $27. That's six cups of coffee at your local Starbucks. You guys, when I say it like that, that's ridiculous. (laughs) That's ridiculous, but it is so valuable. It is so incredibly valuable. Okay, let's move on. $67. Okay, if you have an SUV, you know nowadays that is one tank of gas. $75, that is the admission to a sporting event, a professional sporting event. $150, that's equivalent to a date night. A date night at a fancy restaurant with your hubby, and maybe not even a very fancy date night, but a date night. $250, that's equivalent to one night stay at a hotel, and maybe even cheaper than. $425. That could be one flight to a a domestic city that you're flying to. You can see when you put it into perspective like this, this is of course not the exhaustive pricing menu, but when you see it in perspective, you know that you can afford six trips to Starbucks. You know that you do it six days a week. (laughs) So can you afford the bookshelf styling guide? Yes, you can. You know that you can go on a date night with your hubby. And of course, I, I hope that you choose that over something with me, but that's the price of the room at it. 
You know that you can afford one admission ticket to a professional sporting event. You know because you just went last night. That is the cost of talking to me for an hour. You get the idea. It doesn't have to be expensive. Real design doesn't have to cost a lot. It just doesn't. And I won't allow it to in my space because I started where you start and I want it to be accessible. So as I'm giving you all of this free content, I am honored to do it. And you can piecemeal everything I've said from day one, June 15th, 2021, until now, you can piecemeal it. Absolutely. You can go into the free Facebook group and you can get even more information. You can subscribe to my blog and get even more information. You can dig through the archives of my YouTube channel. Yep, there is one of those. And you can get even more information. You can do it all yourself or you can get the easy package. You can get one of the services. You can get the course so you can learn on your own. It really is more affordable. And so when I hear people say, it costs too much, it costs too much, it costs too much, yes, it absolutely can. It absolutely can. But there are ways to do it affordably. There are. And I'm providing that for you. All of these things that we've talked about are going to be linked in the show notes. All of the links to Bookshelf Style Guide room edits, what they are, it's all going to be linked. So if you know that you've started and now you are reaching some sort of roadblock, you can find the thing that will help you get unstuck. But if you remember nothing else, just remember to book the free 15 minute discovery call so that we can have the initial conversation. All right, girls, until next time, I hope you're all well. See you soon. Hey, real quick before you go. If you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.